What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're doing a podcast with the rapper, artist, Mahaji. Super excited. If you guys haven't heard of him, look him up right now on Spotify and everything before we get started. Also, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate all the new people that have been joining the channel. And with that, let's get into this episode, guys. Boom. Hey, what's, what's up, boss? What's going on, dude? Welcome to the channel. Thank you, thank you, my God. Appreciate you so much for having me, man. Thank you. Of course, man. Thank you so much for jumping on. How's your day been? It's been good, bro. It's been good. Um, late start, but I'm here. You know what I mean? Um, long night. I didn't go to sleep till like 7 a.m. We just recording tracks, recording mad music. So, yeah. <laughs> Man, I I mean, I know that we uh, had a little bit of a communication issue today in terms of timing, but thank you so much for jumping on. Really appreciate it. So for those of you who don't know, this is Mahaji. He's an upcoming artist and rapper based in California now. But really, uh, let's really get started and talk about kind of, obviously now you're recording with Culture and you're in California, right? Correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really, let's kind of take it back a little bit and kind of maybe <laughs> start off with kind of where you got started in music, kind of that early inspiration. And uh, I'd love to kind of hear how you got started. Okay, so for me, um, growing up, I just would listen to music all the time. Like no matter where I was at, I was always like, you know, people like listening to music, but I don't think people love listening to music. So for me, it's like playing in the morning when I first wake up throughout the day, when I'm cooking, when I'm working out, like sometimes literally while I'm watching TV and I think people would just be like, yo, can you turn the music off? Like, like just turn it off. And I think um, I just, I fell in love with it. And I didn't really realize what it was kind of, what was happening at the time. I think um, from me just always listening to it, I started to write poetry to kind of get out some of my feelings. And then from there, I was like, you know, I a lot of songs would come on, like whether they were R&B records, rap records, whatever. And I would start to like, put my own little verses in between like over the guy like whoever was singing or rapping and um from there I remember I made this one poem for my teacher my fifth grade uh elementary school teacher and uh she just started like crying and she didn't like me either so like I knew it was real like she did not like me so when she started crying about some art that I made you know my poetry I was like oh she really enjoys this and then from there um from there, I think poetry turned into, you know, music. It was it just developed on its own over time and it became like an outlet. And um, I think I always knew inside that this was something I wanted to do, but I would kind of allow people to knock me down or keep me from thinking I could do it. And then eventually, like one day I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to go do my thing. And I just from there. Yeah. Actually, I don't think I've asked you this before, but how old are you? Because I know, like, depending on when you grow up and, like, who you're listening to, that has a really yeah. big impact on, you know, your just your general style and just everything in your life. You know, yeah. I remember, you know who I was listening to when I was growing up. So how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Um, so, see, this is the thing, right? I never care about telling people my age. I will say this. I'm a 90s baby, but I love when my fans find out. It's like this weird thing, like, because no one can guess. So I've never said it in an interview. And like, if someone like hits me and guesses it, I'm going to let them know, like, yeah, for sure. But there's this ongoing thing of like some people like <laughs> someone like um, one of my fans literally like a week ago was like, bro, like. How old are you? I, like, are you like 20, 21? And I'm like, nah, like, and they're like up or down. I'm like, you have to find out, but I'm a 90s baby. And if you take the time to like look at any of, uh, I have a documentary out, I have things in my bio and I, I put things around, like anyone who really wants to like dive into like, you know, how old are you? What's your sign? Things like that. Like, it's all there. And I just want to give them the opportunity to kind of go and figure it out for themselves, you know? So I didn't even know you had a documentary out. Actually, if you guys want, I'll add that link to that documentary in the description of this video. So after this podcast, you guys want to check out the documentary about Maji, please check that out. I know I'm probably going to do that after this episode. I didn't know that you had a, had a little documentary out. So tell me, I guess that I'm I'm 92. I just turned 30 in December. Are you in that range? Okay. Just tell me, if, uh, tell me if we're kind of close there. Yes, like 90s baby. I'm not okay. 2000 for sure, like, but I'm definitely a 90s baby. So if like you start talking about like 90s R&B and stuff, I'm with it. Okay, so like when I started listening to hip hop, Outkast was, you know, growing up, Outkast was probably one of my favorite groups. Did you grow up listening to Outkast? Or when you were growing up, who musically kind of sparked you to take that, 
uh, poetry and that artistic side from writing poetry, like you said, in like fifth grade or so to then transitioning that into music? You know, when did that kind of happen and who was one of your major inspirations or who were some of your inspirations to kind of make that jump? Okay, so um, the people I was listening to, like R and B's in my soul. Like as much as people hear me rap or like do a lot of hard, hard shit or like rock, a lot of my um inspiration came from like Usher. I was listening to you know Chris Brown growing up, Usher, Chris Brown, Bow Wow, like you know Snoop Dogg, Tupac, you know things like that. I was listening to Biggie sometimes, Mary J Blige, um, like. Yeah, I was just uh the dream. Like it was crazy, you know. So Dude, I hope uh, you take this as a compliment. I was jamming your music this morning in the car with my fiance, and I turned to her and I said, This has got like a little Chris Brown vibe, doesn't it? And she was like, Yeah, absolutely. That was like literally like what I said to her in the car. So if uh you know, hopefully that's a, that's a big compliment to what you're doing. Dude. It was a lot of fun to kind of check out your catalog earlier today. Thank so, so um, I know that recently you've been dropping and working on a ton of music. So what do you kind of have planned for the rest of 2023? Obviously, we're in March right now and we're doing this interview. Yep. What do you kind of have planned for the next year and then, you know, the next few months with uh, with your music and touring and just whatever you got coming up? Um, So I've definitely been tapping in a lot to the lo-fi scene as of recently. I think they're like super dope, talented, like crazy guys over there. Like they're insane. And the dope thing to me is like lo-fi has always been like a super stress relief type of music. Like, you know, the thing you can have like playing in the background and stuff like that. So I've always really enjoyed listening to it. And now I have an opportunity to really start creating it. And like, I mean, like we have some crazy lo-fi tracks, even some of them are like lo-fi hip hop tracks and things like that. So um, by the end of uh 2023, I want to um, have my album out for sure. I want to also take a trip to Iceland to shoot like a trailer for the album. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. And um, I have so many dope records coming out uh, with my boy Block Tang, my boy Culture, solo records. Um, and just, um, you know, tapping into different genres, whether it's Afrobeats, dance hall, rock, uh, rap, R&B, soul, jazz, um, and like having the real instruments play, not just like random loops, like really like building it, like cultures in here playing guitar, electric guitar, bass guitar. I'm having people come in with like violins and saxophones and you know, really t like moving it from just music to like art, like really making it a full piece of art, you know, like an amazing listening experience. So uh, that's some of the things that I have uh, come up for for 2020. I love, I love that, dude. I can't wait to hear some of the stuff that you've been working on recently. I've been following along on social and I know that you and I actually have a mutual yeah. friend, Grilla Beats, and I know that he's been working yeah. on stuff with you. Grilla's the homie. Actually, I still got his mattress in my garage. So <laughs> big, big shout out to Grilla Beats. He's the Not homie. To Grilla. Yeah. So I know yes, something, that we, something that we wanted to talk about uh, while we were doing this podcast was kind of, you know, being a musician is not the easiest thing. So one thing <clears throat> I wanted to ask you was kind of the effect that, that that's had on kind of your personal life and what it's like kind of, you know, having just your career and then also managing, you know, friends and family and relationships back home because you, obviously you travel all the time. So kind of just share a little bit about kind of what that's like, I think would be awesome to hear. Um. So I would say like relationships things with like family it can be well me and my family don't really have like the closest relationship we never really had um after my grandmother passed in 2012 she was really the glue that held everything together after she passed um I'm sorry to hear it, that I lost my grandparents so rest in peace I'm sorry yeah man like they play such a huge role in your development you know what I mean and anyone who's lucky enough to have like their grandparents in their lives and like their 20s and 30s and maybe some people even in their 40s like god like you're so blessed you know because growing up it's almost like <clears throat> like it's not that you don't appreciate them because you do i always loved my grandma but damn like when they're gone you remember some of the things they used to tell you and it just hits different it's like damn, you were right. Like you were, you were right. You know? So she was really the glue that held everything together. And um, once she left, you know, I don't know my father or know anybody on that side. So, you know, when she left, it was kind of like um, that whole side of the family just split up. Things were never the same. So, you know, I, I never really had any family members that like believed in my dreams off rip 
or invested in me. It was just all me from ground up. And eventually, I think after like you get a couple million streams, they're like, oh, well, he might be on to something. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So I think they started giving me a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt. But, um, you know, as far as friends, that's probably my biggest struggle because I care a lot. Um, I care a lot, you know, and I think, unfortunately, like I've cared a lot about the wrong people, you know, like, um, you know, you, you want to carry everybody with you. You want everybody to kind of see, not for me, it was never like just seeing my vision. Cause I, I know they saw my vision, but I wanted them to see it for themselves. Cause a lot of my friends are artists too, or make music or whatever. So it's like, I got 25 million streams, bro, and I don't come from shit. So it's like, I know you could do it. Like, you know, some of y'all like have are way more blessed than me, in my opinion, at least to have other friends and family that will support you, even people that would invest their money or time into you have resources where like me, there was times where like I was homeless in a car, like, you know what I'm saying? Still like going to studios, making music, you know, like thugging it, whereas like, you guys can do it. So it's like you get in this place where like you believe in them so much and you care so much about their own development and, and, and as human beings and as artists that I would, you know, be hurting myself because I would care more about them than they would care about themselves. And then I would uh look up and, you know, a lot of times people that don't really care about themselves, it's kind of hard for them to care about you or even receive the type of care that you're trying to give. So I would find myself at definitely like a lot of crossroads and I lost a lot of friends on this way. And it was very heartbreaking for a while. I'm healing still, but um, I'm definitely getting through it for sure. Definitely getting through it for sure. Yes, <laughs> uh, from my experience in life, you know, you have a few real ones in your corner, you know, even if it's, you know, for me, it's, you know, less than five people that like I really, really count on, lean on, you know what I mean? So if you can just have those couple of two, three people in your life, you know, other friends and other associates and whatnot, they may come and go over time. But as long as you can kind of hold on to, a, a, you know, a little solid core, I think that's a, a really important part of, you know, just life in general. Yeah, honestly, I, I, I definitely agree. Like, it definitely made room for some real ones. You know what I mean? Like, what well, like culture is the go and the fact that like he's like in my corner in such an impactful way, like he's really helped impact like heavy pieces of my artistry like so the fact that he's in my corner like means the world to me you know um and a couple handful of other people but like i say this like all the ones excuse me all the ones that are around now definitely matter like a lot you know what i mean they definitely matter a lot you know so I'm grateful for them you know of course, I think that's honestly the most important. You'd rather have a solid group of three or four people than 20 or 30 people that don't really have your back, you know? Yeah. Like a smaller circle. So I also know that you have another uh, mutual homie, Kasky, right? Did you go to uh, Did you go to the uh, Artist Summit, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Did I did. Summit? Yeah? I did, yeah. Kasky and Anonymous. That's, that's my, awesome. yeah, those are my guys. Um he's been someone I've looked up to for like eight years, like going on like 10, really, you know, um, him just making music. And like, there was times in my life where I wanted to commit suicide and I would just listen to Caskey's music and it would just put me in a better space. And um, he just never gave up. I, I consistently would watch him. Like you could tell, like through artists, music and kind of where they're at through their interviews and stuff that you could see where he was at and he just, he never gave up and that really put a batter in my back to like, okay, bro, like he's in a situation where he could definitely like bow out. Like I got my money. I'm good. Like I'm out, you know? And he was like, nah, like I'm gonna keep going. And that just showed me like one that from the outside looking in, it ain't easy. It's, it's not just this thing where you just have it and then you're good forever. Like, no, you have to, you have to put in the real work, the real effort. And, um, me and Kasky would end up on like IG live together like four years ago, twice. And then we'd be on the phone together. And he started like really recognizing my name. And then I got in touch with Anonymous, who's my number one favorite producer. And we would just get to talking. Next thing you know, Anonymous invites me out to the summit. And he's like, bro, just pull up. That's all I need you to do. Just get there. You get there, you're good. We got you. So I get there. He kept his word. Both of them did. Like, the, I'm there. They got me. I end up uh, at Kasky's house. Incredible house. It's so dope. Like, oh, man, it's so dope there, bro. And um, we're just like, yo, let's make a record. 
and it ends up not being a feature. It's a full artist collab, you know, main artist collab. So definitely he, they both threw me like a huge alley-oop and have just been like amazing supportive like figures in my career thus far. Me and Anonymous will be on the phone for hours. Like I have Cassie's number now. I can just text him. It's crazy. So like, you know, for me, it's just like a dream come true and, I remember about five years ago, I DM Caskey on my old IG, really like six years ago. And I was like, hey, bro, one day I'm going to have a song with you. And look at where we are, you know? So we're good. We're I good. think he's one of the dopest rappers, one of the best artists that's currently out. I, uh, I've talked to Anonymous on IG. Uh, I haven't met him. I haven't had the opportunity to meet him in person, but I've been obviously listening to his beats and his production for a long time now. Paskey and I met and became friends back in 2019 and actually speaking to kind of why you like some of his music and kind of getting towards more of that personal side. I don't think I've ever actually talked about this, honestly, on a podcast or an interview, but in 2019, uh, my dad actually committed suicide. So that's one of the reasons that kind of I connect to Caskey's music so much. I was 26 when that happened. So uh, just a, definitely like a challenging, you know, part of my life. And if you listen to his music, you definitely know where kind of that correlation is. So that's definitely where some of the, I guess, bond and friendship with uh, with him kind of started and also the attachment and just appreciation for the music and kind of how it can help people heal. And like you said, kind of lift you up and motivate you and just kind of that kind of rocky mentality of just, you know, one step forward and just keep on going, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, his, his music is definitely... Um... It's definitely put me in in a space to heal and to grow, you know, because, um, you know, for a long time, I kind of just was super just depressed down and I just didn't really want to be here anymore. And through listening to him, he's just very raw. He's very raw. There's no, not holding his punches, you know, very like uh, putting himself on in the forefront for the good or for, for the better or for worse. And you got, you kind of got to just appreciate that because, you know, he doesn't have to share certain things, you know, he could just, he could be super surface level and he's good enough that he could be surface level and still, you know, make amazing music, but he decides to let you in and give you a, a place at his house and decide if you want to walk in and heal with him or not, you know? So um, definitely admire that about him. And that's kind of inspired me to do the same thing for my fans and the people who, uh, love me for who I am, you know, not just the surface level of things I decided to talk about. Yeah, man, it's really incredible. <laughs> Speaking to that example, you know, I've seen him so many times at shows, like, go out of his way to, like, meet everybody that's there, not just the people that pay for meet and greets and really, like, build that relationship with people. So I think you moving forward with your career, kind of looking at that as an example, you know, just eventually and re even right now, you know, your music's going to impact a lot of people. So being able to, you know, maintain those relationships and say hello to the fans that, you know, stay late after shows to see you and stuff like that ends up making a really big difference. I see you resharing some DMs and stuff like that from people that have been listening to your music for a long time. So it's cool to just see that relationship cultivate and just grow over time, you know? Yeah, it's dope. And I'm so glad that you said that and you touched on that because every now and again, I'll get like some weirdos that'll be like, yo, why do you have to share it? Like, why do you have to? And it's like, bro, I literally like hide the profile picture. It's like all the way on the side on the corner. Like you can't see the name. All you can see is the message, one. And then two, they love it. Whenever I share it and they see that I shared it, they're like, yo, like that, like, you know, cause I already responded back. So then when I shared, they love that. But you'll get, it's almost like when people do things for the homeless but record it. And people are like, why'd you have to record it? And it's like, you got to combat some of this negativity out here because the negativity is on the forefront of like every time we open up our phone. So I was like, yeah, bro. Like I want to show like some love to people, bro. Like, so I'm glad that's how you viewed it. You're like, yo, I see you showing love because that's really what it is. It's not like a bragging thing or anything like that. It's like, yo, like this is someone who enjoys me. I want to show them that I appreciate you and I care. Like I, yeah. I see, you, bro. Like I see, you, you know? Of course. I mean, dude, one day you'll have 100,000, 200,000 people following you. And then those people that remember, you know, when you had five or 10,000 followers and like showing them that attention and like just responding to when they tell you that a song had a positive impact on them really it makes a big difference over time, dude, in terms of cultivating and building your fan base. Yeah, bro. Like people, they care. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. just like me, like if my favorite artist like reposted me, I'd go crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It takes it one step further, you know, but beyond, like you said, kind of that surface level where you start to really build a relationship with some of the people that listen to your music. Yeah, exactly.
besides the music thing, art and culture and fashion and, and sneakers, you know, there's just so much that's involved with kind of the scene in general. What besides hip hop, R&B, what non-music, you know, whether it's artist or fashion, you know, like paintings or whatever, what non-music kind of creative stuff kind of really gets your inspiration going? What are you really into that's not, I'm curious about the non-music stuff now, you know, like mm -hmm. what's, what's, what's really like sparked some passion for you that's not in the music world? Well, um, I do like clothing and clothes and modeling and, you know, this, that, and the third. I'm not a super, like, heavy designer guy. I'm more, like, just if I like it, I like it. But um, for me, it'd definitely be MMA. Like, MMA for sure. Like, if I wasn't doing music, I'd be a UFC fighter, 110. Yeah, okay, I was I not did. expecting you to say that. Yeah, bro. Like, I, um, I was, uh, I've been doing MMA since I was, like, five. You know what I'm saying? Uh, semi pro is is my shit. You know, uh, I love kickboxing. Love it, love it, love it to death. Uh, judo jiu jitsu, I'm pretty okay in. Like I'm okay. I'm definitely a solid Muay Thai kickboxer. Um, but um, not too heavy in the wrestling. Judo jiu jitsu, I'm cool with. You know, um, I want to get better at boxing, but definitely like a solid kickboxer, hundred and ten percent kickboxer, taekwondo. Um, things like that. But yeah, UFC inspires the fuck out of me. Like I'm a huge Conor McGregor fan, John Jones, who fought yesterday and won, my guy. Like, like George St. Pierre, Chuck Liddell, like, you know, old school guys, Anderson Silva, Israel Adesanya, uh, Sean O'Malley, like even like just the Joe Rogan podcast, like in general. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like DC, Daniel Cormier, like I've watched all these people like literally develop. Like I love the UFC to death. I'd definitely be a UFC fighter if anything. So I've listened over the last few days. I, I know I told you before we were doing this podcast, I was going to try to do like a little dive into the catalog and you have yeah. like a really diverse range of music. So speaking to, cause I didn't expect you to say UFC. So speaking to that yeah. kind of environment, you know, the cage kind of, you know, ultimate fighter kind of mentality. Some of your music is like really chill. And like you said, kind of lo-fi vibes and like R and B style. And you've got some other stuff yeah. that's like more aggressive and like more, more rock and roll kind of style so when you're kind of making that more aggressive style music is that kind of where musically at least you're kind of channeling that some of that inspiration from exactly from, from kickboxing exactly. from some of that other stuff that you're kind of uh really into yeah it's it's really um now it makes sense you know now that right. i've had a big in-depth conversation <laughs> Like listening yeah. to like the scope of what I listened to over the last couple of days makes a lot more sense. Cause like, I was like, wow, this is like, you know, there's so much stuff here, you know, there's like, it's really yeah. cool. How diverse <laughs> it is. Cause like when you click, especially through your Spotify, just on shuffle, you get yeah. different snippets of all different stuff one after another. And it's just really unique. And I really appreciated that. Thank you, man. I, like, thank you so much. Because I songs to my, to my playlist today. So. Bro, that's love, man. Because you know, throughout my career, in the beginning at least, um, so many people would try to get me to stick to one thing. That's not who I am. I'm not just one straight line person. So for me, it's like, if I could do it all, then why not? Like, I like doing different things. And yeah, like the aggressive aspect, because people see me and they're like, yo, you're really, really chill, calm, well collected. And that's true. I, I would agree. But I'm that way because I'm able to, like, to deny that people also have an aggressive side. We all do. Everyone does. It's just like, what do you decide to do with it? So for me, I kickbox and I pit it into my music. The majority of it goes, that aggression goes into my music. So, yeah, by the time I'm done yelling and going crazy and being aggressive, yeah, I'm chill. Like, I got it all out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm not mad anymore. So you're getting that piece of me the chill side, the collected side, the calm side, because this is where I decided to pit it at. I didn't want to go do like stupid things and like go get into like reckless fights or like go, you know, allow someone to push. straight in the ass because you know all the kickboxing, well, you know? Yeah, just nah, man. I'd rather like, let's, let, all right, cool. I'm upset. Like, let me put it on the record. And the positive out, like the positive um, impact that it gives me because it's like I got to get it off my chest. And now I get to put a piece of art out there for people to listen to and enjoy as well. So it's pretty positive in my my retrospect, you know what I mean, in my opinion. And I think that's one of the sweet and really interesting things about music because you can really 
create any individual track based on how you're feeling that week or how you're feeling that month. And it can really be, you know, if you're willing yeah. to be diverse, you know, some people stick in like really specific, you know, similar lanes with the beat selections that they pick and stuff like that. But if you don't want to do that, you can do whatever you want. You know, you can make a rock record one day and then you can make a lo-fi record the next and then a heavy hip hop track the next day. And just, it all fits under your sound over time because you just develop that with the audience that, you know, that loves your music. So exactly. I think that's super cool, bro. So exactly. with this last, I like ending. We've got a few more minutes in the podcast and I really like ending. So I'm a big art collector. A lot of the stuff on my channel from the people that, uh, that follow the channel, I do a lot of art reviews. I do podcasts with artists like yourself and a lot of the fun things um, I like to end the interviews with are an art review. So I know we haven't seen a little art, a little art reaction, I should say. So I've got a little piece right here on my, on my table and I'm going to just kind of show it to you. And uh, I'd love to just get your initial reaction because I really just value the, I guess, cross platforms, you know, like having a certain artist as a musician looking at a sculpture or a painting and then getting your reaction, I just think is really, really cool and a fun way to, to end the interview. So this okay. is, have you ever heard of Bear Bricks? Yes, I love them. So this is a steel yeah. alloy Keith Haring Bear Brick. It's like three pounds. It's like pretty heavy, two pounds maybe. It's pretty heavy. So I don't know if you've ever seen one like this, but it's, yeah. it's the only steel metal alloy bear brick that I have in my collection. The arms are like fully flexible. It's a pretty cool piece. So yeah, I just wanted to know kind of your thoughts on it. It's got obviously the matching box with all of the crazy yeah. artwork. To me, Keith Haring is like one of the coolest artists in like, you know, basically American history ever. So yeah, dude, would just love to get your thoughts on a little bear brick piece while, uh, while we wrap up the episode. You know what's crazy is that I genuinely have wanted one of those things for forever. Like eventually, like I kind of want um, I want to eventually like decorate the studio, like really, really decorate the studio. And that was like some of the pieces that I'd love to like have because I never really, I never had one because it wasn't until recently where like I live in the studio. You know what I mean? So like obviously I was going to other people's studios and they just I don't know. People put like the little light LED light flashing things and they kind of just say whatever after that. You know, like I really want to decorate it and I'd love to have some of those. That one looks mad cool, bro. It's so hard. Yeah, now nah, that one's fire, dog. I like it a lot. Awesome. I, dude. You know what? Well, you know, over the next few months, I might have to, you know, we might have to uh, link up when you're in Denver and maybe I'll send you a little bear brick. I've got a little, you know, a few in my personal collection, but, you know, a little 400 percent bear brick or something like that to add to the studio, man, might be oh. uh, might be a requirement for uh, for later this year, dude. Yes, bro. That would be love, man. Honestly, I would love that. Thank you, man. Well, dude, thank you so much for hopping on the channel. I'm going to include all of your info, your Instagram, Twitter, any uh, other links in the description, you know, the link to that documentary. Everybody, make sure you give Mahaji a follow on all social platforms. Check out his music on Spotify. Blow up all of his stuff as much as possible. And dude, much love. So appreciate you coming on the channel. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you so much for your kindness and your patience, man. Um, it means a lot to me, bro, everything that you're doing, bro, and just keep going up, bro. Like, you're a boss, man. I, I've heard about you, you know, from a couple other people, bro. You're a boss in your own right, 110%, bro. You're definitely doing your thing, and uh, you keep going up, bro. Love, bro. Thank Dude, you for having me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, and I can't wait to link in person when you can get to Denver. When you come to Denver, we'll do this in person. We'll yes, a, let's go. We'll, we'll do a part two in person as soon as you can make it to Denver, bro. Yes. Uh, I awesome. be easy Dude, much love. Have a great day. You too.